Podcasts are hot right now. How do I know? Well, you're listening to one right now, aren't you? But you might be wondering, how on earth do I get my voice out there and start my own podcast? It all seems so intimidating. Between hosting and platforms and monetization, it can get real complicated real quick. Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We started this podcast over two years ago, not knowing clue one on how to do it. So how do we do it? We did it with Anchor. Anchor is the free podcast app with creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on all the platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And everybody likes money, right? Well, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So go right now, download the free Anchor app, or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's the E-Commerce Minute, your daily dose of e-commerce, tech, and retail news with your hosts, John Suter, Bart Moraz, and Brittany Blackman. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm located in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. It's E-Commerce Minute, episode 695. In today's episode, Instacarms aims to flexibly speed up grocery delivery. The state of online grocery deliveries is apparently a lot more fragile than anyone had anticipated. One of the biggest problems that customers have encountered is that delivery time slots are almost impossible to come by. After filling out their carts, customers attempt to check out, only to find that all the delivery options are suddenly unavailable. This is true for a lot of grocery delivery companies, but one service is trying to fix the problem. Instacart recently rolled out new ordering options aimed at unlocking more delivery windows amid a surge of demand for its online grocery service due to the COVID-19 outbreak. With the company's fast and flexible feature, customers can choose to have their order delivered by the first available shopper rather than having to select a specific delivery window. The customer will then be given an estimated delivery range, possibly spanning a couple of days, and will then be notified when a shopper picks up their order and is scheduled for delivery. It's savvy marketing on Instacart's part to label this as a fast option when it's really about customers identifying themselves as someone who's willing to wait. The second new option is an extended order ahead feature that lets customers plan their orders up to two weeks in advance instead of just one as before. This will be useful for those who hunt for recipes and plan their meals, then place one large order timed within their payday. It's also handy as a way to grab a guaranteed time slot in advance, then build your cart in the weeks that follow as you think of things you need to buy. The new features are now live in some markets with other markets to come online later. I'm sure that all of us have many things to say about our shopping experience <laughs> in the past four weeks. Nightmare. Uh, well, who wants to start? <laughs> uh, I'll let you start because I got plenty to say. <laughs> uh, well, mine is as easy as we just go. There's no way I'm getting anything delivered because just everything is just taken. So, you know, every few weeks, put a hazmat suit on and <laughs> go on it. <laughs> yeah. Basically. So we, you know, we kind of jet it out. We actually go to some farms around here, which is great, which just makes it a little easier. A little um, less stressful. Space. A little stressful. We kind of know where food comes from. You know, we're trying to keep it up as much veggies as possible and, you know, make it easy and not too crazy. So, but we know people who drive online and that's probably the easiest and best way to do it. So you're not exposed, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of trouble everywhere. So I've had the broad range of experiences. We tried doing ShopRite when we finally were able to log on to the site. There were no delivery windows then. Eventually there were delivery windows then. When we tried to place an order, we had to wait in line, which I had never seen on a website before. We finally hey, did. Most, a lot of e-commerce sites will do that with like extended traffic. That happens. Yeah. No, I've never seen that. I personally, I've never encountered that. So that was a new one for me. And then we eventually did get our order. The pickup process was great because the little pickup store is next to the actual store. So you don't even need to dive into the chaos. You just go to this little store, you pull into a parking spot, you call them on the phone, they run their stuff out. The downside was they basically say, "Uh, yeah, we know you placed this order, but we have the right to substitute or not give you what you asked for. So out of our, the order total was $99. I get the receipt at $70 because there were 12 things missing. So that didn't work out so great. We have been going, unfortunately, into different stores with various degrees of success. Aldi was probably the best experience. I think what a lot of these stores, and I'll give you another analogy, Giant, 
listen, we've never been through this before. So they were all kind of caught flat footed as to how to deal with uh -huh. traffic and they didn't have guidelines to work with. I went to Sam's club and I went to giant in the last four days and the experience is greatly improved in that they do the one in one out, which everyone does now. Everyone has to mask up, do all that kind of stuff. But the fact that they control the traffic a lot better, it makes it a less stressful experience. Again, I don't know who's buying all the toilet paper and chicken, but it depends on where you go. Sam's club. I had luck giant. I did not so much. Yeah. I've had the full range of experiences, but getting to the story at hand, Instacart, I couldn't find a slot on there. So we must not be in the market that's rolling out the new choices. Like I just kept trying and trying. It was like no deliveries available for weeks and weeks and weeks. It, they all got caught off guard. I mean, they all got caught off guard. I mean, yeah. if you look at it, you know, this was like a nice to have people get delivery, you know, it's nice to have in populated areas. I mean, even outside of that now Instacart is in a lot of places, but it's an interesting time where everybody just got caught off guard completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had a really good experience at Target the other day. Like they are one of the only stores that are like actually following intense social distancing guidelines. Like I feel uh -huh. like it's more of like a free for all in the grocery stores I've been to, but in Target they are super strict. Like if you're not literally standing like six feet away from somebody, they will tell you to back up. Oh, good. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, and it's so clean, and they wiped down the conveyor belt every single time. Wow. They were not uh -huh. doing that at Acme. No. Uh, yeah. Acme in Jersey is actually a lot better. They're very particular about it. They finally put the signs on, like, you know, you can only go one way in each. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's that's not, yeah. Because I was just in an Acme yesterday, and my friend who lives in Delaware echoed the same thing in that they have, like, you can only go one way down the aisle, which is one of the things that frustrated me trying to shop anywhere where it's like you're trying to avoid people, and all of a sudden, here comes three people down, rolling down the aisle. They don't care. They're coming right, right at you. Like, <laughs> yep. I feel like it's I'm like getting the, attacked. The Jaws music plays in the distance. <laughs> Although, <laughs> Although we did not see those signs for a hot minute. And then we're like, oh, wait, we need to follow these. Yeah. But oh, crap, luckily for us, we shop like off time and it's, you know, maybe there's 10 people in the whole store, which is fantastic. Yeah, it's great when the store is empty. You got to learn when to shop. Like I've had my well, that, Home Depot experiences. Never, ever go uh, to a Home Depot on a Sunday. <laughs> it's not fun. No, no. But also like, I think that the weird part is, I don't know if you noticed this, if you go in, you like shelves are empty for like pasta and stuff like that. But the fresh produce is there. Mm -hmm. like what you really need right now is, is fresh produce all yeah. the time and eat that and people are just buying you know things that they should not be buying i think there's still some residual panic buying happening i think as the weather gets warmer and people get more into a routine that is going to subside a little bit there will be other problems with the food supply chain which you know that's not related to panic buying it's just parts of it are going to start breaking down because some of the plants are closing because of illness and just you know you got to get the food here somehow that's going to be an issue that's going to come up during the summer but i think for the most part that panic like you know again like who the hell is buying all the toilet paper and paper towels what's going on here and the chicken like i was just looking at the chicken <laughs> like who's eating the chicken well well if you look at it you know your typical diets right everybody goes after the chicken and meat and then not everything else, but they're totally should be doing opposite. You know? But yeah, you're right though. Like you go in the produce section, you can find anything you want in the produce yeah. section. Yeah, truly. Except shredded lettuce. You know what? I think there's some sort of conspiracy against pre-shredded lettuce because I've gone to like six stores and they didn't have it in the past like month and a half. But then like every now and then I'll go to like one Acme that didn't have it That's before what? and they'll have shredded lettuce. That's where people are buying in bags now. That makes sense now. You know what, Brittany? I have a recipe for shredded lettuce. Send me $5 and I'll send you my shredded lettuce recipe. Um, <laughs> it's in your PDF. So as Bart said, some of the other companies were caught off guard. Fresh Direct for Amazon Fresh shipped in Peapod to face similar challenges with skyrocketing demand for online grocery delivery. Again, this is going to be something that's going to, uh, listen, what business do you want to be in now? You want to be in e-commerce and you definitely want to be in the grocery business because, you know, it's completely insane. And you know what else? Yeah, what other... So every now and then we try to get fast food because we're sick of washing dishes. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> the line at the Chick-fil-A in South Philly wraps around the restaurant twice you guys i'm not kidding it wrapped around twice and people were literally waiting in that line i have never been more furious before seeing something i was like what 
I just on, wanted people on foot or people in cars? In cars. In oh, cars, okay. I just we, wanted a chicken sandwich. Up here in the suburbs, we have the Chick-fil-A's with the double drive through Oh. Have you ever seen one of those? Oh, those are fancy, yeah. yeah. Same thing. It just wraps around like people love their Chick-fil-A. I can't believe it was a Monday at like 4.30. We even <laughs> went early because we were like, oh, it's 4.20. Like, we know. Like, there's going to be a lot of people there. And then... <laughs> Literally, it wrapped around twice at four thirty. We were like, "What? What?" So the weird part is also Kroger and Giant Eagle. Some of them are converting to a curbside pickup only at some point. That's going to be interesting. Oh my or god! The new term is dark grocery. <laughs> yeah, is. which is it is dark is, grocery. God. But you know they're not set up for those things. You know because basically you become a full warehouse and logistic company, right? But how are you set up for that? And then are you actually going to do that? Is that preventing, you know, is that going to make the shoppers that are inside of the store? Like, is that going to slow everything down? Is it, you know what I mean? Like there's yes. so many questions about this. Yes. And what I've seen, again, I was in Giant two days ago in Acme yesterday searching for things. And you see a lot of the shoppers there. I think it's a highly inefficient way. The concept's great, but it's highly inefficient when you try to scale up and you have all these people like, generally shopping for other people and they're all bumping into each other and the carts are all over the place and there it is minor chaos. So what they're starting to do is now they're going to have these dark groceries and basically it's just, they're going to rent out plenty of real estate available to rent. They'll just rent out like a closed up Sears and throw all their grocery in there and just have the people just picking and packing all day long. Yeah. I mean, that's basically you just redesign your whole grocery store, right? Yep. You make it more efficient so that they're running through and not, uh-huh. you know, merchandise like a typical grocery store, which is, it's good for someone, you know, so we all know how grocery stores work. You pay for shelf placement, but it doesn't make it for an efficient run through of your actual shopping experience. So if they have these dark groceries, then it's just like doop, 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 doop. Amazon efficiency, baby. All right. And we can also talk about how Instacart, they had the tip baiting. I think everyone has heard about that where people would throw a nice big tip on the Instacart driver's mm-hmm. account. And then after the groceries delivered, they secretly withdraw the tip. I think those people are evil and should be exposed. <laughs> yeah, to put it lightly. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good thing. All right, close up with a little stat time. Regarding tipping in March, it says customers either adjusted their tip upward or did not adjust their tip after delivery on 99.5% of its order. So that's that 0.5 that are evil. It also reports a 30% increase in customer tips during this time. I don't know about you guys, but I have been tippling and <laughs> tipping a lot heavier than usual. And also, one other side, do you find yourself when you're in a grocery store and kind of in that panic situation, you're looking less at prices? Oh my God, yeah. I, oh, I, nobody's looking at prices right now. Absolutely. It's like, I have it, I'm buying it. Oh, I'll figure it out when I get home. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Customer's average basket size with Instacart is up by more than 25% month over month. That's according to Grocery Dive. All right, you guys got anything else? Nope. Nope, nope. All right, that's your e-commerce minute for today. We'll see you on the internet tomorrow. That's it for today's show. If you like the show, do us a favor and subscribe or leave us a review on iTunes. And don't forget, you can now listen to the e-commerce minute on your Amazon device. Just add e-commerce minute to your flash briefing. And finally, if you have a comment or suggestion or just want to say hi, find us on social media at Sumo Heavy.